guys. Today we're talking heartworms. We're going to talk about natural treatments that I use for my dogs for prevention and it, for my dogs and cats actually. But um, I mean, it's kind of a hot topic. You know, there's a lot of controversy on heartworm prevention. Should you give the medicine every month? And you know, I'm just going to share my insight and how I do things and I hope it can help you. Uh, make sure you always talk to your veterinarian. Um, I'm not, you know, completely against conventional meds. There's times when they're probably really needed for heartworms because heartworms is a really bad thing. And I mean, it comes from a mosquito. So our dogs are always around mosquitoes at some point in the summertime, you know. So, you know, there's just, you got to use common sense. But anyways, well, let's get into it. Okay, so like I said, heartworms come from a mosquito bite. And, you know, you've got to kind of think of it like this. You have to think where you live, if your dog is short-haired or long-haired, how often is your dog outside? Is it indoor? Is it outdoor all the time? Is it outdoor only in the evening? You know, I mean, there's a, all through the night. Do you put your dog out at night? I mean, there's a lot of different variables to heartworm prevention. And the reason why is because you know, if your dog is, if you live like in Montana and your dog is indoor dog only, then you probably don't need heartworm prevention as much as, uh, you know, or a shorter months out of the year or whatever. You wouldn't need it as much as somebody who need, who lives in like Houston, Texas, and their dog is an outdoor dog. I mean, there's just a lot of variables about it. But for me, I have, um, you know, I have a great Pyrenees who stays outside most of the time. And while his coat is really thick, he could still get bit by uh, mosquitoes on the nose and on his paws and things like that. I have a, bo a young boxer, male boxer, who short haired and loves to be outside all evening long through the summer and everything. So I have to work a little harder at prevention for him. But let me talk to you about some of the ways that I, you know, feel really confident that I'm doing a good job of, you know, keeping heartworms at bay for my dogs. Now I choose not to do conventional heartworm medication based on the way I care for my dogs, where I live and you know, how I use my natural products and stuff like that. So, I mean, do your research. And if you have any questions about that, you can always talk to your vet. Um, of course, they're really going to want you to take heartworm medication. And in some cases, like I said, it might be the best bet for your situation. So always check into that. So you can ask any vet pretty much. They're going to tell you that there are ways to help your dog not get heartworms naturally, like, you know, with diet and different ways to help their immune system and their body stay, just their overall health, their homeostasis. So diet is huge. If you you know, like if you see, you, you'll think, oh my gosh, heartworms are absolutely just horrible. Every dog in the shelter has heartworms. And you will see, especially around Texas and, you know, Louisiana, different places like that, you know, you, heartworm positive, heartworm positive, and all these dogs in the shelter. Well, a lot of these dogs run as strays. They eat off the streets or the worst kibble that money can buy. And they're under a lot of stress. And these are like huge factors that just open up a dog for heartworms. If you have a dog that is on a really good diet and is indoors and is really well cared for and stuff, yes, they can still get heartworms, but the chances like go down drastically. So you kind of have to think of that as well. Diet is huge. You don't like the more corn, soy, and you know, rice and all the different things they put pack into ki dry kibble um they can really make the blood tasty for these pests and stuff fleas ticks mosquitoes everything so the better you can feed your dog the better you know it's going to be i mean the more yeasty a dog is the more they get bit by stuff so it, it's just you know it there's kind of like a a correlation there with diet so make sure you feed a really good diet optimal diet um, that, and that's what I do. I have 10 dogs for anybody who doesn't know and all the way from a, a 200 pound great Pyrenees to my little five pound chihuahuas, schnauzer, boxer, cow dogs, a hound, 
a, a husky. I mean, I've just got, and they're not all purebred. They're just rescues. But, you know, it's just kind of going to tell you a little bit about how I do my dogs and, you know, and what dogs I have. But for the most part to their diet, the, the one thing I do is I add brewer's yeast. And um, brewer's yeast is great. If you don't have a yeasty dog already, it, I mean, if they're already got like ear problems and chewing their feet and, and I'm going to link, uh, my video on yeasty dogs down in the description box, but I mean, yeasty dogs need, that needs to go away first. You need to work on that, get rid of yeast if you want to feed brugis. So you don't want to do that. If your dog has already got a yeast problem, UTIs, all that kind of thing, that will be usually uh, a yeast problem. But if you have a healthy dog, uh, then brugis yeast is great. But I can tell you this, the thing that is in brewer's yeast that makes them unappealing to mosquitoes is the B vitamins and especially B1. Now I found this out because I personally was a mosquito magnet um, when years and years and years here in Oklahoma, come out here to the ranch, be mowing or whatever in the tall grass, I would get eaten alive. And everybody would say, oh, you must have sweet blood. Other people would be out here and never get a bite on them. And I could never understand why I was so appetizing to the, the mosquitoes. It was horrible. Well, somebody told me that if you take B1, they won't bite you. So I did. I started taking B1 and it works for me. It, I do not get bit by mosquitoes anymore. So anyways, uh, I take my B1 faithfully all through the summer and I do not get bit by a mosquito. So it's the B vitamins, I think, that especially the B1 that's in the brewer's yeast that is making your dog's blood not taste, they don't have the smell that the, the mosquito's looking for. So that's something to kind of notate. So if your dog is yeasty and you wanna use the B vitamins, I'm pretty sure they make B complexes for dogs look and make sure that there is some B1 in it and just get them on some B1. My dogs start this, it's a, today is March 2nd and I, you know, they pretty much get bruises kind of all year round. I do take a little bit of a break in the winter. I add this to their uh, jar of, you know, supplements that I give them on top of their food every day and they'll get this all season long, all summer long. It, you know, mosquitoes start probably in another couple of weeks and we'll have them all the way until late into November here in Oklahoma. So these are like a must for me for heartworm prevention are my B vitamins, my Brewer's yeast or my B1. Then my second thing I do is I do add garlic to my dogs. Um, I do that anyway all year round for other health benefits. And I know there's a lot of controversy on garlic for dogs, but um, it's, just something my dogs and cats have always eaten. And um, and the cats can have the B vitamins as well, but um, the garlic seems to make them less appetizing to the mosquitoes as well. They just have, a, they emit a smell that the mosquitoes don't like. And um, I, I know there's a lot of holistic veterinarians that have talked all about garlic and I feel very confident. I've been feeding garlic to my dogs for over 35 years, so you know, I've not had any health issues and every research paper that I've ever seen, you have to feed garlic in massive amounts to be toxic. It is not got the same compounds that onions have that can cause the anemia. So I feel very confident, confident feeding my dogs, both raw garlic and powdered garlic. And I believe it does help with the pest situation. So garlic is another one you can look that up and i know it can be given to cats as well i have a 17 year old cat who's eaten garlic almost every day of her life and she's very healthy so my next thing i do is i make a spray i started making this and selling this in my shop i don't know eight years ago i guess and um it, i actually did this way before i ever knew about the b vitamins and i would spray myself and it does work really really well but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't last, you know, like if you're going to be outside for six or eight hours or something, you would have to keep reapplying it. So it, it's, it's awesome stuff, but it just doesn't last. It's not got, it's made with essential oils and distilled water. 
Um, you'll want to use, uh, if you want to make your own, you can make it a whole gallon for just a couple dollars. Um, you'll want to use distilled water because distilled water starts with nothing in it. It's completely clean. It doesn't have any other pathogens or anything in it to spoil it. Even though most essential oils in their own right are preservatives, you'll, you would still want to start with distilled water. I'll link my recipe or I'll actually put my recipe down in the description box below. And, um, you, if you want to make some yourself, um, I buy, you know, sometimes I just buy some, if I'm out like at a health food store or something, I just buy other people's. I make my own all the time. And I usually always have it on hand cause I make it and sell it myself. But what I did is I started with uh, eucalyptus, rosemary, lavender, and lemon, tea tree, and neem. And all those things are huge at deterring uh, mosquitoes. And so, you know, our whole goal for, for, you know, heartworm prevention is just keeping mosquitoes off your dog and cat. That's it. Um, but they did a study which I, I, I just always thought was the coolest thing with, uh, I think it was off with DEET, something with DEET in it, and then just lemon and eucalyptus. And this was a, I think a, a yeah, it was a published study. It was a, a government study where they did uh, that side by side, spread a hand, you know, with the DEET and with the lemon and eucalyptus and put it in with mosquitoes. And it completely worked as good as the DEET. So, I mean, we use this on my grandkids. My, we use it on the babies under a year old. It's, it's you know, super safe, spritz them all down and everything, going fishing, hiking, camping, whatever. Um, but my only complaint is it didn't last very long. So, it, you know, it's, I think if you maybe, you could add some other oils to it, a carrier oil or something, you know, uh, but you'd have, to, there, you'd have to have an emulsifier or shake it every time really, really good. It still would not probably, you know, be blended enough to stick to the skin and stay on you for hours and hours on end. So, you know, I used to go traveling. I always had my backpack, have it on every porch. Um, I make it up and have it in big spray bottles for the cow, for the horses, the goats, the chickens, uh, spray everywhere with it. You know, it's good stuff. Great to have on hand and good to have in your toolbox to keep, uh, you know, heartworms away from your dogs and cats. We actually can't use it on cats because it's got essential oils and they're just not good for cats. You could make one with hydrosols and that would be safe. Like you could do lavender hydrosol and um, I don't know what other hydrosols they have. I'm sure they have plenty of hydrosols and you could make one. I do other preventions. I do the B vitamins for my cats and we'll talk about the diet to make sure. Um, the next thing I did is one year we had a massive amount of rain and we got tons of mosquitoes and I had farmers lined up out my door wanting me to make them a salve. They tried the spray and they loved it, but it didn't stick long enough, like I said. So I ended up making a salve and I called it Buzz Off and it's got beeswax, shea butter, and uh, coconut oil. So when you rub it on, it sticks to you. It's oil based, it sticks on your skin and you know, it lasts for hours and hours and hours. So it's really, really good. And this I actually put in um, lavender tea tree, neem, citronella, added citronella and lemon and eucalyptus. So pretty much the same exact stuff. And this stuff was amazing. Everybody loved it. And they just kept coming back and for more and more and more, started selling it. I used it on my horses, my pig, my goats, everything, you know. And for the dogs, I just took it, rubbed it in my hand, let it melt down, and wicked it all over their body, and it was great. Well, I love it so much for mosquitoes. Yes, this is great, and I will link that in the description box as well, how to make your own, because it's super simple. I did make another one that's a little bit stronger for fleas and ticks, because this will make, mosquitoes are a little bit more picky. They won't jump on. And, you know, like if they smell this, they will not land on you, but like ticks will jump off of, they call it tick bombed. They'll jump off of a tree and onto you. They might not want to bite you because they have this on, but this actually works more like, uh, you know, it really repels the ticks. So I did make a different one. If you ever see this in my store and wonder what's the difference, I'll just tell you really quick. This one has totally different ingredients 
It's clove oil, cinnamon oil, peppermint oil, tea tree, citronella, and lavender. So the eucalyptus and the uh, lemon are the only ones that aren't in here. Now you could add that to this and make it even stronger, but I just didn't see a reason for that. This is more for my flying insects and this is more for my crawling insects. But I mean, it doesn't really matter. And, and this might work really, really well just for the mosquitoes. I just haven't really, you know, tried it out for that. But I'll link this one too down below because this is great for fleas and ticks, like I said. Um, so those are my three essential oil blends. And like I said, you can't use these on cats. You can only use them on dogs, but um, they're awesome. You can use them on humans too. Um, they work great. Okay, so the next thing is actually diatomaceous earth. Mosquitoes hate diatomaceous earth. They will not land in, in, on anything that has diatomaceous earth. They, I think they instinctively know if they land on this powder that they're going to die, they're going to die from it. This will kill everything, you know, that kills flies, fleas, ticks, everything. It's excellent stuff. So I, my dogs are always dusted throughout the summer months with this for my flea prevention and ticks and everything. And this also helps really good with the the um, mosquitoes. Now mosquitoes usually bite cats on the ears and like on the nose. Now you don't want to put this on the nose, um, but you can put it all around the ears and work it, work it back and then work it into the coat, the rest of the body and everything. And same thing with the dogs, but you don't want to put it around their nose or their eyes. It, it you know, it's people say, oh, it's, it's, you know, gets in your lungs. It's going to kill you and blah, blah, blah. Well, I mean, you don't want to breathe any powder and you don't want powder in your eyes and you don't want, you know, it, you just don't want it around your face. So just be very careful with that. But it does work as a, a good uh, preventative for heartworms as well, as far as I'm concerned. And then, of course, one of the biggest things is dump buckets. Keep things clean. You know, anywhere mosquitoes can breed, get rid of it. And if you can't, you know, spray, they, they sell, or you can make your own in a gallon. You can do like clove and orange oil and get one of those sprayers and add that to your sprayer and spray your entire yard with it. And if it's low concentration, enough to kill a mosquito and prevent them from wanting to come into your yard. I mean, it's not going to hurt your grass. I've done it a thousand times it, it, for the fleas and ticks. It works great. You could use eucalyptus and lemon oil and stuff like that. You want to make sure if you have cats going through your, your yard and stuff like that, you don't want to spray it at a really high concentration where they're going to walk through it and lick their paws because these essential oils are really hard on their livers. So, you know, use research, do, do research on that. Uh, I think you can buy, I think Wonderside, I love Wonderside. They've done something to a lot of their essential oils that makes them safe for cats. So you might want to look at that. And I know they have one for a yard sprayer and stuff. So spraying your yard is great. Keeping the mosquitoes down in your yard. Encouraging bats. Put up a bat house. I have so many bats here. That's They eat thousands of mosquitoes. Anything you can do to keep mosquitoes from entering your yard away from your pets is a great prevention as well. Diet. Uh, topical stuff and then of course giving your dog shelter uh, you know at night when mosquitoes are at their worst or early morning hours if they're outside you know if you can get them in a way where they they're not in the garage or where, wherever you can do during mosquito season to keep them from being bitten that's just think like that just think that you don't want your dog to be bitten by mosquitoes they're not usually out during the heat of the day so like my dogs are out most of the time in the heat of the day when uh, Giuseppe likes to go out all evening long with Duke, uh, my Great Pyrenees. So I usually douse him down with a lot of this stuff. And I've not ever had a dog with heartworms. Um, I've had in here in Oklahoma dogs for over 35 years. And I've had a lot of outdoor farm dogs. And we've just not had heartworms. I, and I know that they're in this area because just 10 miles down the road, we do have at the shelter heartworm positive dogs and you know in in my area vets and everything we have heartworms around here and our mosquitoes do carry them so just be really really smart about it and you know just do your best 
to keep mosquitoes away from your animals. And I think that can really help. And if you are absolutely unsure and you feel so much better about giving your dog the heartworm meds, maybe look into doing it just during the months. I know they say you should do it all year round, but you know, I, I mean, maybe you should, like if you, like I said, if you live in Texas or something like that, or somewhere, Florida, I don't know, you know, somewhere where they have, we don't have mosquitoes in the winter time. They, they, they definitely, fleas, ticks, mosquitoes, we get cold enough, they die off. But, um, you know, it, it, it's just something you need to go by where you live and your certain situation. But anyways, I hope you found some uh, good information on this. Um, I don't know. I, ha I probably have a ton more things that would help with heartworms that I do. I give my dogs like, you know, a mushroom complex, which helps their immune system. Anytime you can support the immune system, that's going to help with it. I mean, there's just a lot of things that you can do to, you know, keep your dog super healthy. Just think with that mindset and you should be really in a good situation that way. But anyways, I will talk to you later. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked it and please share it if you know anybody that has a dog that might benefit from this and we will talk to you in the next one. Bye.